Well, hello guys. Pablo Lamberto, I am a veterinarian working at CattleEye and uh, responsible for uh, global commercial and marketing. And um, what our uh, company is doing is uh, autonomous uh, video monitoring of uh, dairy cattle at the beginning and expanding probably to other species uh, as well in the livestock space. Um, when we say autonomous uh, video monitoring, we are using basically footage for a, a single uh, uh, security camera, off-shelf security camera, very low cost uh, uh, equipment, and we are analyzing those footage through our algorithm, through our artificial intelligence uh, capabilities, in order to provide uh, to producers with a locomotion score as our first uh, feature. So, all the things about artificial intelligence and autonomous things look like a very complicated. What we are doing with this is basically training our computers to really identify highly uh, efficiently the uh, behavior of the cattle. That is what uh, we are doing. You have to be very patient because the clicking is going uh, a little bit slower, so... There you go. So this is kind of a representation of what we are doing. If we have a, a parlor, a milking parlor here, we are installing on the roof or, or the ceiling uh, something around a 12 uh, foot high, a camera, that camera, on the step on of the rotary. So that is basically what you need, connected or not, with uh, the RFID recognition system. So we are uh, establishing a connection between the RFID system of the parlor or we are implementing uh, an RFID uh, antenna, which is also a kind of low cost uh, equipment. So this is a representation. Our algorithm recognizes twice the pattern of the cows and also recognizes the behavior of the cows expressed for these points over the cow. So that is what uh, allows our algorithm to recognize the normal or abnormal or a deviation of the normal pattern of the locomotion for the cows. In the future, different points of uh, reference will be giving us the opportunity to also recognize uh, body composition score that is uh, obviously highly correlated with uh, metabolic disease management and uh, feeding management in the uh, early lactation cows. coming. There you go. So this is what the, our camera is saying and this is the returning line from the, the parlor is that when we prefer that the cows would be monitored and evaluated. So in the stepping in uh, into the parlor what we are doing is identifying the cow. When the cow is leaving the parlor is uh, identified for the other camera and score every one individually. So it doesn't matter if they crowd it or uh, they are uh, overlapping, the algorithm is able to recognize, identify every single cow and score that cow while it's uh, walking. So we need a distance uh, probably around uh, uh, 12 feet or 9 to 12 feet in order to in a straight line the cow walk for the algorithm to recognize that pattern and compare with the normal behavior or the deviation to the behavior. One of the things that we're trying to do is trying to say our system is uh, at least first as the human uh, eye. And uh, for doing that, what we did is a validation with the University of Liverpool and uh, the professor Giorgio uh, Okinomo, that is uh, probably one of the world uh, uh, leaders on, uh, or references on uh, lameness in the world. And uh, what we did is in the UK, we took two highly trained uh, veterinarians that they are uh, scoring cows on the daily basis. In the UK, they have a mandatory system in which uh, uh, by law you have to have uh, a kind of assessment of your herd at least once or twice a year in order to recognize the uh, lameness uh, status. And based on that, you have to accommodate your practices to minimize any impact on high lameness uh, uh, prevalence. Lameness is uh, one of the three diseases that is, are related to uh, animal welfare. So that's why they are highly uh, scrutinizing this, uh, uh, this uh, evaluation. So we took these uh, two veterinarians trained on locomotion score and we put a vis-a-vis -vis with the uh, system 
and we tried to see what was the concurrence or divergence on opinion about the system and their scores. What you are seeing is the same cow. On the, on the bottom you can see the evaluation from cattle eye. The same cow is uh, the view that the veterinarians have. In order to see the same moment, the same uh, place, veterinarians using visual observation as a gold standard and our system working on the, uh, uh, on the footage. Several cattle uh, were recognized uh, for uh, both the veterinarians and there were something around 90% agreement between veterinarians and cattle eye. Uh, and not only that, so the system uh, outperformed in the lower rate of uh, lameness Cattle outperform uh, the, the veterinarians in these particular ones. The other important thing is that when they went to observe the lesions on the foot, the cattle eye was able to correlate more accurately the uh, white line disease, uh, the, the uh, ulcers, and uh, some other uh, um, situations that they identify in the, in the hooks. So, 1,400 cows, three dairies, what we did is say, well, at least our system is as good as well-trained professionals that they are doing just that for a living, but that outperformed basically the human eye on the uh, deeper analysis. This is going to be a publication that will be available next month, so that is the first one that we have. This is basically our core for uh, the implementation of the system. So, we are very, very uh, keen on keep uh, simplicity in all the process. This is not only simple, but also uh, economical for acquiring technology. What we are using is one, one or two cameras, that is off-shelf cameras. We are recommending Hick Vision that could be any other. The one that you can buy in Amazon for 120, 150 bucks. Uh, you can probably use no more than two in the different uh, setup that we have. And the other one is the uh, ability to include or not an RFID panel. Could be an option or not. If you have an, uh, an RFID panel, not even have to spend that, uh, any, any, any uh, technology further than the camera. So the only recommendation is that we need to have uh, at least 12 uh, foot uh, distance between uh, the, the, um, uh, the ceiling and uh, the, uh, the, um, the ground, not the cattle basically the ground, and we have to have a straight line for the cows to walk between 9 to 12 feet. So that is basically the only thing that we require. It could be better if we can have an exit line in which we can uh, uh, score two single lines or a, a line that could be probably two cows wide. We can do it with wider, but that would be probably better if we are going on a single or double line exit for the, the power. And that is what the, the only thing that you need to put, plus the cable to the uh, internet connection on the, on the office. That is the only thing that you need. We have different uh, kind of setups, because uh, one of the things that I can tell you, and you know that very well, is uh, not any uh, uh, dairy, it's uh, set up or layout uh, exactly the same. You have a different uh, a kind of uh, parlors, but the return lines or access uh, points. So this is the solution that we have for the rotary. In the rotary, as I mentioned, we have the first camera that is the ID camera connected with the RFID. In the cloud, the system is connecting that images to the RFID number. The cow is milk in their normal uh, uh, time. And when the cow is coming out, the second camera is the one processing the footage for the locomotion score. This is uh, another kind of uh, a different uh, kind of setup. In this case, it's uh, whatever the parlor that you have, double parallel or a herringbone or whatever, you can have a uh, one or two return lines. So in that case, let's say that you have one. The only components that you need is just one camera and one uh, panel reader to be installed. If you had two return uh, exits, you need probably to double that uh, 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 hardware. But at the end of the day, that is the only thing that you need. The rest is connected to the uh, uh, computer, to the uh, 
Wi-Fi or uh, uh, internet with a decent uh, broadband uh, power, you will be just able to upload and download all the information that you need, not a special kind of uh, uh, heavy uh, internet uh, capabilities. So if you can watch a video on the parlor with the internet, you can basically upload a, and a video, I mean a Netflix or whatever. So it's not a highly requested, it's a broadcasting or a, a, a streaming uh, videos as well. So we are doing some kind of the setup, trying to analyzing our assessment of the site is not a very complicated. The only need that we need is uh, uh, just uh, uh, taping or recording the access of the cows and the way of the cows all the way in and all the way out. And um, three, four, five minutes of a video that would be enough for us to realize where you have to install the camera of the things. Unfortunately, and don't blame me, but uh, apparently internet is down in uh, completely Wisconsin. So I have a live link in which I can demonstrate uh, our app uh, live. So the cows that you are seeing there are the 14,000 cows that we have in the system currently. And um, this is the web-based uh, app that you can have in your phone, in uh, the tablet, or in your computer, or whatever you were, if you have access to internet. And uh, with that, very, very simple kind of access to the information. You have the uh, uh, information about the overall herd uh, footage. You have the segregation of the lame cows, in which uh, you can say these cows are the ones that we are flagging, like being lame. You have the uh, aggregation of the data for herd level, for a category of uh, cattle, and for different uh, uh, scores of lameness. Or you can go to the individual cows, which is the one that you have like a lame cows, and a score from zero to 100. So normally the scoring uh, for uh, globally known is from zero to three or one to five. In our case, we are comparing the zero to five to the one, zero to 100. That is giving us uh, a little bit more flexibility, giving us, no, giving the, the producer more flexibility to choose uh, different management practices based on the wider range of uh, scoring. Uh, number uh, score three in the uh, zero to three could be a cow that could be close to 95 or close to 75. Those cows are different, so you can manage uh, with a little more flexibility and more freedom of uh, uh, allocate resources with that broader uh, range of uh, scores. And you click on the cow, that is the number of the EID of the cow, the electronic ID of the cow. You can have the footage of the cows from the latest uh, uh, milking. We are doing one milk a day. And uh, that footage is going to be uh, uploaded into our cloud and uh, staying there for a while if uh, you want to consult them or watching them. The information about the evolution of this cow is important. So every single point here is one day of uh, scoring that cow. So you have approximately 15 days from the, the last day, that is this day, before in which you can see the evolution of that cow uh, behavior. So in this case, that started kind of pretty high and going probably higher here. What we are seeing is that different uh, kind of categories of cattle, like uh, uh, first uh, lactation heifers or uh, early lactation cows probably could be more, more interesting to watch on the evolution. What we are trying to do here is, uh, with a, in a study that we are conducting now in Iowa with the University of Minnesota, what we are trying to determine is where is the best point for early intervention for those cows. So regarding our system can tell the, you the cow is lame, uh, that, that is not very valuable. You even you can see the cow is lame. The thing is, when that cow transition into being lame and how early we can intervene in that cow with a different kind of uh, management in order to avoid that that cow first impact the lactation and the productivity and reproduction for that lactation, but also being success, susceptible to being lame in the next lactation, which is highly probable if we are not intervening very, very early. That is what the, the data is coming, and we want to be probably presenting that at, at the end of, uh, of the year or early next, uh, next year. So 
that is probably one of the most valuable things that we're going to have from this particular feature. With the same footage, the same camera of the installation, what we are working in our development is an algorithm for the body composition score. The body composition score is highly correlated with the changes on uh, or management of metabolic disease and management of feed. Uh, so that is something that is coming and uh, we are not expecting to have to put any other different camera or uh, any different component, different software basically, different algorithm. And basically that, that could be the rounding up why this is uh, important. All the systems will be pro uh, providing a new data sets that needs to be integrated with uh, the rest of the information uploaded in the hair management system, like uh, Dericom, Bobby Sync, or uh, PC Dart, or Uniform Agri. And uh, that is uh, probably what uh, we are trying to tell the producers. Even if uh, the cows have the ability to talk, that we can uh, do that with the data, so the, the, the cows are talking to you, still you have to have an eye on every single cow, and that is impossible. So uh, technology is uh, probably the uh, main uh, uh, tool that producers can use in order to be more efficient, and they, they need to do that. The only way to do it is trying to replace uh, what visual observation or observation that human beings were doing in order to replace that for machines that could be doing that good or even better than the human, uh, than the human eye. Monitoring system obviously can help uh, the behavior consist consistently and with no bias. And that was my first question that I did to uh, George Okinomo, I say, your scorers, how, how, well, how well did a score through a long period of time? And he told me, you know what, uh, even if you are the best, some days you are drinking more coffee and you are more sharp. Uh, the other days uh, you uh, have an issue with your car and you are pissed off and you are not paying too much attention. So we are trying to keep uh, the, the bias out or at the minimum. And the only thing that our systems, and you know that, cannot do is going backwards. So our system, the more information that we are putting, that is the beauty of the machine learning, is that the more data that we are putting and more train that the algorithms are taking, the better they are becoming. So that is a big, 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 big difference. Talking about job maximization, I'm trying to avoid uh, job uh, replacement or trying to cut jobs because that is uh, a kind of one of the barriers for adoption of the technology at the farm level. People is scared, so this device will be taking my job. I, I, I don't want to, to use it. Job maximization is trying to say you can allocate uh, the labor that you have and you have to maintain because it's difficult to find in a more uh, you know, productive or efficient uh, kind of uh, uh, task that just uh, watching cows walk or just uh, watching cows getting hit. So if you can take that out of these guys and these guys put into more valuable kind of uh, 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 task, that, that would be obviously better. The other thing is consumer awareness is something that uh, everybody is experiencing. People, since it's food what is involved, uh, they are being very concerned about what, what the where the food is coming, how the animals are treated. So it's not a scrutiny about the dairy farmers doing a good or bad job. It's uh, can you demonstrate that your food is coming from a well-treated uh, animal or at least uh, it treated in the humane way? Well, these systems are able to record all your data and show the uh, improvements that you are doing showing what uh, you are doing for maintaining lower level of uh, lameness in this case, and that is totally connected with the kind of food uh, that uh, we are producing. And obviously on the environment, in, environmental impact, uh, well, uh, we are not still feeling that very, very strongly yet, but that is something that is uh, coming very, very, uh, very, very hard. Dairy industry, specifically in the United States, uh, it's mastering on managing uh, greenhouse uh, emissions. So they are doing, reducing significantly uh, greenhouse uh, uh, gas emissions in the last uh, 20 years, significantly while improving productivity. Very hard to do. Doing with better management of water, better management of land, and better uh, management of waste. So. This is uh, something that system like that could be helping. Basically what we are doing is 
if we are reducing 10% uh, lameness or keeping that below 10% of lameness in the dairy, you are probably capturing almost half a ton of carbon per cow per year. So if you are expanding to the probably 40 highly uh, technified cows in the world, 40 million uh, cows, technified dairy cows in the world, that is a lot of uh, carbon footprint that we are uh, sequestrating, right? I will be stopping there because it seems too boring. I think I did it in time. Good. Any questions uh, or uh, any doubt? Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.